A craft knife is a surgically sharp tool like a scalpel, and you need to treat it with respect. Be alert at all times during a cutting session. Don't multitask or socialize, but instead, focus on your work like a surgeon, so you don't accidentally become one and perform finger surgery on yourself. Be aware of the location of your tool, and keep the safety cover on, until ready for use. Pick up the knife by the handle, never the blade, and always keep the point and edge facing out and away from you. Ironically, the most dangerous knife is a dull knife, because you have to exert extra pressure on a dull blade to make it work, increasing the likelihood of knife slippage. Points are fragile, and snap off quite easily. Before each cut, inspect the blade for sharpness. If a blade becomes dull, immediately change it out for a fresh blade. This is not the time to economize. The blade is held firmly in the handle by a clamp grip mechanism tightened by a neural textured locking mechanism. To change the blade, grip the main part of the handle firmly in one hand, and carefully grasp the neural part of the handle between pointer finger and thumb. Slowly twist the neural section until the clamp is loose and the blade can be carefully removed without resistance. So, extract the old blade and immediately dispose of it. Grip the blade between thumb and pointer finger with a sharp edge out and away from your fingers. If you have to pull hard on the blade, the clamp is still too tight. Once extracted, immediately dispose of it. Treat this like medical waste. It's sharp like a needle and in the trash it can really do damage to an unsuspecting person. In the maker space, we have a sharps disposal container. Use that. At home, wrap the blade several times in some masking tape or duct tape before putting it in the trash. Next, very carefully attach your new sharp blade. Getting blades out of the box can be tricky. I recommend unfolding the protective paper, then use the paper to lift the block of blades slightly up and out of the box, but don't remove them entirely. Once clear of the lip of the box, you can carefully pick the blade off of the end of the block of blades. The blades are covered in a light coating of oil and tend to stick together a bit, so this needs care. Lay your new blade on the table, and tuck the block of blades and their protective paper back down in the box, then close it. Carefully pick up your knife blade, and place it in your non-dominant hand. The blade edge and tip should be oriented away from your fingers. Pick up the knife handle in your dominant hand. Align the base of the blade with the clamp opening, and insert it in the slot. If it doesn't go in, don't force it. Rotate the clamp grip to open the clamp wider instead. Once inserted, tighten the clamp grip by rotating it. If you aren't going to cut right away, attach the safety cover. When cutting with a guide like a straight edge, make sure the guide is appropriate. Don't use a wooden or plastic straight edge. The knife can cut right into those materials, nicking your straight edge and creating a dangerous gouge. A metal straight edge is preferable. Make sure your metal edge is scaled appropriately for your work. Shorter cuts are more accurate when you use smaller tools. Longer cuts are much easier to do if you have a long straight edge that you don't have to reposition. Always use a cutting a mat. A self-healing cutting mat like this one is best, but a piece of scrap cardboard will do, so long as you don't overuse it, and create ruts and gouges that can cause the blade to slip. Never, ever cut directly into a table surface. If your metal straight edge is a T-square like this one, turn it upside down so the T on the square is facing up. You want to control the knife with your dominant hand, so the guiding edge of the straight edge should be on the dominant hand side, and holding the straight edge should be done with the non-dominant hand. Never cut with the blade on the non-dominant hand side of the straight edge. Now, take the knife blade and grip it like a pencil. The body of the handle should extend on top of your hand between thumb and index finger. Your index finger should be free to apply light but persistent pressure on the knurled area of the knife as you draw it along the straight edge. Don't hold it like an eating utensil or a food knife. You won't have enough control and you won't be able to apply pressure in the correct manner. Lightly depress the tip into the surface of the paper such that you make a small puncture that aligns with a measuring or crop mark. Now gently push the straight edge against the knife, press down on the straight edge, and remove the knife. Use the heel of your knife hand to keep pressure downward on this aligned portion of the straight edge, keeping the knife up and away from you. Now slide your non-dominant hand up the straight edge keeping light pressure downward on it, until your hand is adjacent to a second measuring or crop mark. Put more pressure downward with your non-dominant hand and remove the heel of your knife hand. Bring the knife up to the second mark, and repeat the puncture and alignment process here. Check this a couple of times, as the straight edge may have a tendency to drift away from the mark. When satisfied, hold the straight edge down with your non-dominant hand near the mark furthest away from you.
spread your fingers and thumb out so you can maximize the distance over which you are applying downward pressure on the straight edge. Now place the blade against the straight edge such that you are applying light but persistent pressure down on the paper or board but also leaning slightly in toward the straight edge. You will draw the knife along the area where you are keeping pressure on the straight edge, but not far past that. You may be able to cut about a foot in length adjacent to the hand applying pressure on the straight edge. For most large cuts, you might cut anywhere from a quarter to a third of the total length of the eventual full cut. Now, you do need to put some pressure on the knife for it to do its work, but don't use so much pressure that you necessarily blast through the paper in one cut. Draw the knife long this first cut with enough pressure that it might take two or three passes to feel it cut through paper, and maybe a dozen or so passes to cut through cardboard. You know you've cut through when you don't feel the friction of the paper or board resisting the cut. The knife will feel quite smooth as it cuts into the cutting mat surface alone. When you can feel that, it's safe to move down the straight edge for another pass. Use the heel of your knife hand as before, to keep pressure on the straight edge to keep it from shifting, and slide your non-dominant hand down to about the midway point of the cut, then repeat the action you did for the first part of the cut. You'll feel the knife easily seat itself down in the earlier cut, and from there it will seamlessly continue the cut you started. Repeat this process until you've cut down to the measuring mark closest to you. When finished with a cutting session, please cap the knife for safety and return all tools to the proper location. By following these safety tips you should never need to know the following, but what if the worst happens, and you cut yourself? We can't address what you do in your own home, but in a studio or maker space on campus we have a protocol. In the case of any injury, notify the monitor on duty, who will file an incident report. If the cut is a minor one, First aid materials in the maker space are prominently visible. By minor, we mean a small clean cut that you can stop the bleeding for on your own, with cold water or gauze and pressure. Elevating a small cut and applying pressure can stop bleeding quickly. Once this has stabilized and you've bandaged it to protect it, you may wish to seek professional medical follow-up aid to avoid infection. If the cut is more serious, use gauze to keep pressure on it and elevate it to mitigate bleeding. The monitor on duty will notify campus security and or contact 911.